Today on DC News Now, enjoy the mild weather today because rain is on the way. Meteorologist Damon Matson is tracking the latest forecast as the clouds approach. I mean, shot by an officer in Prince George's County, the latest on the investigation. And believe in the families that we're helping. That's what keeps me going. And meet the local woman on a mission, spreading smiles and joy to kids across the DMV in this week's DMV Doer. Plus, new developments in the Baltimore Key Bridge collapse. What's next as federal officials are now involved in the investigation. And wins, losses, and what's next? Hear from the players as they recap the highs and lows of the Wizards season. You're watching the station covering all of the DMV. This is DC News Now. And good afternoon and thank you for joining us for the news at noon. I'm Mark Hall. Meteorologist Damon Matson joined us with the latest check in the forecast. And Damon, right now it's sunny and quiet, but how long will it remain that way? Oh, my friend Mark, I'm just happy that it's quiet for the time being. Yesterday was a stormy one across the region, so to get a little bit of a break is a welcome thing for all of us. But it is only going to last for so long. But for now, there it is. High pressure has nudged its way back in. That big blue H is sitting right over the DMV, and that is what has so far brought about very sunny skies and quiet conditions as we now roll into the early afternoon. But the front that caused all of the storms yesterday. It is down to our south, but as we go later on into this evening tonight and then into the day tomorrow, this front is going to rebound back toward us, and that's what's going to spark up a little bit of additional rainfall as we head toward the middle of the week. But for now, while the sunshine and the dry conditions are here, we should enjoy this. Temperatures are extremely comfortable in the middle to upper 60s, but also a few locations have already reached the lower 70s like Manassas, Frederick, Wall and then back over toward the Shenandoah Valley as well. So these beautiful conditions will continue. We'll see a few more clouds roll back into the picture, especially later in the afternoon going into the evening. But all in all, this is going to be one of our nicest days this week before that next round of rain arrives here tomorrow. We'll time out when that soggy weather will be back on Wednesday, as well as when some additional rain chances will be in the forecast later this week. That's coming up here in just a bit. All right, Damon, thank you. Developing now, Prince George's County Police say an officer shot a suspect who's accused of having a knife, and it happened last night at a shopping center in Oxon Hill. DC News Now's Yam Marisa Say has more from the scene. Yeah, this is the third incident within the past week where someone fired at an officer or an officer fired at them here in Prince George's County. Now, Forest Heights police say the suspect exited their vehicle with a knife, and that's when their officer fired their weapon. Yet another police shooting in Prince George's County. It happened around 5.30 p.m. at the Rivertown Common Shopping Center in Oxon Hill. Police say this person was a suspect for an assault in another jurisdiction, and that's what led to officers pursuing them before the shooting happened. Now, this is something similar to what we've seen in the county already this week. On Sunday, there was a home invasion in District Heights right off of Addison Road. Prince George's County Police found someone stabbed in the home, and another was holding a piece of wood. That person was asked to put the wood down before officers fired. And then last Thursday, two 19-year-olds were arrested for shooting at a Prince George's County officer in inside an unmarked police car in Upper Marlboro. That officer was not injured. Now, as for yesterday's shooting here in Oxon Hill, police say they asked the suspect to exit their car several times, but they refused. Take a listen to what police say happened next. The suspect eventually exited the vehicle armed with a knife. During the encounter with the armed suspect, one officer discharges his duty issue weapon, striking the suspect. Officers rendered emergency medical care until an ambulance arrived and transported to the hospital with injuries that are considered non-life threatening. Forest Heights police say their officers were wearing body worn camera and Prince George's County Police Department will be taking over the investigation. Reporting in Oxon Hill, Maryland, I'm Yamari Sasse, DC News Now. All right, Yamari, thank you. Heartbroken Howard University students gathering at a vigil last night to remember a freshman hit and killed. DC police say that Mohammed Samura was walking near Fairmont Drive last Thursday when a driver hit him before crashing into a wall. The school officials say that Samora was majoring in computer science and was a member of the university's esports team. He was a great, he was a great person. Um, he's known for the little things, right? He uh, 
liked anime. He was, he was just fun to talk to. It's something I was, I don't think anyone is prepared for, mm -hmm. especially as a teacher. Well, the university confirmed the driver who hit Samora is a faculty member. Police say that they were speeding and taken to the hospital after the crash. No word on if charges are going to be filed. Well, after days of fighting for their lives in the hospital, three-year-old Zachariah Henry and his six-year-old brother, William Clark Bryce, died after a house fire at their Clifton, Virginia home. Our Northern Virginia reporter, Max Marcella, has more. This embrace between William and Zach shared two years ago holds a new meaning now. The love these two boys showed each other, it's hard not to bring a smile to your face. The Bryce family says this video, this moment, is one they didn't fully understand until now. William and Zach were brought to D.C.'s Children's National after a fire at their Fairfax County home, and Monday the family shared they passed away. They were just six and three. Just hug your kids a little bit longer. This video from Jamie and Raina Bryce, the boys' parents, was posted online late Saturday night. Their message is powerful. It was shared more than a thousand times with prayers coming in from social media commenters from all parts of Virginia, the DMV, and the country. They're rolling in. As the family works through its loss, the efforts to help them are in full swing. Within hours of the fire, Love Church was collecting clothes and other items to give to a family they say would always do the same for others. How amazing they are in times of need for people. The Bible says those who refresh others will be themselves be refreshed. The investigation into what started the fire is continuing, and so are the prayers. And in his most recent Facebook post, the boy's father writing, our prayers with all of yours have been answered just in a different way. Max Marcilla reporting and we're learning an online fundraiser for the Bryce family has raised more than $170,000. Meanwhile, Love Church is still collecting donations and other clothing and other food items for the family. And they can be brought to the church's Gainesville office Monday to Thursday from 10 a.m. until 5 and their Winchester location from 9 to 5 every day of the week. Meantime, leaders in Bowie are collecting gift cards for families affected by recent house fires at Woodland Lake and Pointer Ridge. Now, you can drop off gift cards at Bowie City Hall this week and next Monday. Drop off hours are between 8.30 and 4.30. Well, it's been 10 years since medical cannabis was legalized in the state of Maryland. And in Western Maryland, that has been a lifesaver for one man being treated with Lyme disease. Matt Grutner was just a kid when he was bit by a tick and infected with Lyme disease. He says the pain was unbearable and had to walk with the cane for about a year and a half. He also had severe inflammation, brain fog, and memory problems. But with the new law, he was able to access medical cannabis as an alternative for the opioids that he was taking for pain relief. I was just being prescribed too many opiates, and with the opiates, I wasn't really feeling any better. Uh, they were making me more tired, um, sick. Well, Goodness says that he is able to, to more reliably treat his pain and is now employed at a cannabis operation in his hometown. Just last year, Maryland legalized the sale of recreational cannabis. Well, happening today, the district closing and changing some government services as the city observes Emancipation Day. Emancipation Day commemorates the signing of the law ending slavery in the district. Other government services closed today include recreation centers, the Health and Wellness Center, and the Department of Motor Vehicles. The Sasha Bruce Youth Center and the Department of Housing will also be closed today. Another service changing is trash collection, which will slide by one day for the remainder of the week. The district will suspend their reversible lanes on Rock Creek Parkway, Canal Road, and 16th Street, and they will also stop all construction in work zones today. Well, a lot of people walking, biking, and driving in the district have had to deal with an influx of mopeds. Many have witnessed an erratic driving, and DC News Now, Daniel Hamburg breaks down the issue. The number of mopeds in D.C. has been steadily increasing over the past few years. As a pedestrian, those things come out of nowhere or they're doing unpredictable maneuvers. For people walking and people biking, it's an issue. There just seems to be way more of them, probably three or four times more than normal. Um, and, you know, total disregard for traffic laws and 
you know, driving in between traffic, weaving in and out. Most seem to be food delivery drivers, and the D.C. Department of Transportation has taken notice. We're well aware and we're very concerned. DDOT Interim Director Sharon Kirschbaum says the Highway Safety and Vision Zero offices are spearheading a task force to handle the problem. In the short term, we are doing a lot of educational outreach. Um, we're partnering with the Office of Migrant Services because we've observed that a lot of the drivers of the facilities or some of our of the vehicles or some of our newer residents. We caught several mopeds on camera in bike lanes and going through red lights. The problem is many don't have registration. I feel like there's there's no accountability for anything. So if you can be tracked or ticketed, then maybe you'd pay more attention to the law and drive safer. Reporting for DC News Now, I'm Daniel Hamburg. All right, Daniel, thank you. A former Terp gearing up to take on the WNBA. Baltimore native Angel Reese will play for the Chicago Sky next season after they drafted her with the seventh pick in last night's draft. Reese spent her freshman and sophomore seasons at the University of Maryland before transferring to LSU. National phenom Caitlin Clark was taken by the Indiana Fever with the first pick in last night's draft. Well, the Capitals facing one final hurdle as they look to make the NHL playoffs. They could book their ticket to the postseason with a win over the Flyers in Philly tonight. The Caps kept the odds in their favor by beating the Bruins 2-0 at Capital One Arena yesterday, and they are currently tied on points with the Red Wings, but hold the tiebreakers since they have won more games in regulation. Well, trending now, New York City lawmakers proposing a creative solution to drive down the city's rat and rodent problems. Now, they are eyeing rat birth control as a more humane way to reduce the population. Lawmakers say that it provides an alternative to glue traps and poison, which kills the animals slowly and painfully. Now, if approved, the uh, city ordinance would establish a program to control the rats using birth control.